In April 2019, a truly incredible event occurred in astronomy and astrophysics. A radio photograph of a black hole was announced and released. This image was taken and processed over a two-week period in April of 2017 by the Event Horizon Telescope Collaboration, but analysis took some time. Around 5,000 trillion bytes of data were collected and analysed, and reported in six research papers in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. This is the black hole in the centre of the galaxy Messier 87, or M87 for short, a supergiant elliptical galaxy about 55 million light years from Earth. The image is, in a sense, not really of the black hole itself, but what is called its shadow, since there is no way to really photograph a black hole, but only the light well that energy disappears into, and around which the superheated matter and energy orbit before it all falls into it. Still, after decades of artists' impressions of what a black hole might look like, we have finally seen what we can of one. A recent analysis of this photograph has also captured the swirling magnetic field around it, seen through polarised light, and also the mysterious super-energetic jets of energy which somehow escape into space from this particular black hole, which is of a type called a blazer. Even with this iconic photo, black holes remain very enigmatic, and extremely difficult to understand. For instance, nothing that falls into a black hole can ever be recaptured, and yet, according to modern physics, no information can be destroyed. So where does this information go? Is it preserved and somehow spit out again? Also, do black holes go anywhere? A key component of this conundrum is what is called the event horizon, where all sorts of weird things seem to happen. It's time to take a trip to an event horizon. The Event Horizon Telescope Collaboration, or EHT, is not one instrument, it is a series of eight radio telescopes across four continents, linked by multiple computers coordinated by an atomic clock. What the EHT does is make repeated observations of black holes, in this immediate instance, the one in M87 as the Earth rotates, inserting new observations into the growing data set of the target. The more data that are required, the sharper the image becomes. These distinctions have to be made, just for clarity. In the event that clarity is not achieved, we can call that the clarity horizon. The particle horizon is essentially the limit of what we can see of the universe, beyond which photons have not yet reached us. In an expanding universe, it will be the case that we will never be able to see beyond a certain radius, since the edge of this sphere will always expand faster than the photons from it can reach us. This is a matter of time, distance and velocity, we exist within a particle horizon, which is why there is a limit to how far in distance and time we can see the universe. An event horizon is something different. It is the result of a gravitational field that prevents any information, which just means electromagnetic radiation and therefore information, from escaping it. It is in principle impossible to see beyond an event horizon, which is why it is called that. There are no events visible from within this horizon. The Hubble Sphere is the extent of our universe that is expanding slower than the speed of light, and is therefore observable in principle. There is theoretically a region of the universe of unknown extent beyond the Hubble Sphere, which we can never see, explore, or even detect, but which must exist in theory. This means that we exist within a particle horizon relative to a hypothetical outside observer. A clarity or conceivability horizon a concept invented specifically for this video, is when we reach a point when all of this stops making sense, in the event it ever did. It is the limit beyond which intelligibility and comprehension begin to fragment. This is an epistemological concept, rather than a mathematical one, but denotes a point beyond which mathematical and physical concepts exceed ease of comprehension, and lack synthetic central integration. In other words, concepts that cannot be imagined, but perhaps may only be conceived of by mathematicians and mathematical physicists. Black holes are places where gravitation is so strong that escape velocity exceeds the speed of light. 
Their snow light or energy can escape them closer than a certain distance. There are currently two basic types of black holes as we understand them, stellar black holes and primordial black holes. Stellar black holes form when a star of a certain minimum mass exhausts its nuclear fuel, expands violently into a supernova, and then its core collapses. This can result in a neutron star, which is interesting in itself, but if the original star was massive enough, this can also result in the remnants of a star collapsing so much that its gravitational field is too strong for even light to escape. Primordial black holes are something different. These are theoretical consequences of the Big Bang, and the creation of the universe as we see it now, and we don't even know if they really exist. While stellar black holes are large, primordial black holes are the consequences of conditions at the very beginning of the universe, and current theory allows them to be very small. This is because in the very early universe, all energy was packed very tightly, and so primordial black holes may have theoretically been very small. But the result is the same. They have an escape velocity beyond which even light can't travel fast enough. Escape velocity is the velocity an object has to achieve in order to escape a gravitational field. Take a rocket for example. In order to achieve escape velocity from the Earth's gravitational file, it has to reach a speed of at least 7 miles per second. Electromagnetic radiation, including light, travels at 186,000 miles per second, or 3,000 kilometers per second. A gravitational field that requires any speed higher than that creates a black hole. There have been numerous simulations of what it would be like to see a black hole, and these are bizarre. Matter and energy, including light and radiation of any type, approaching a black hole orbit around it. And the gravitational field of the black hole will bend that light and radiation to such a degree that even the radiation at the far side of the black hole, but not yet actually in it, will be visible. We know that gravitation can do this through the general theory of relativity, and also because we've directly observed it through the now familiar phenomenon of gravitational lensing. The latter is when the gravitating objects, such as stars and entire galaxies, bend light so that objects behind these bodies appear in front of them. And so, a black hole would look very weird, with its front towards us and its back away from us, and its top and bottom and sides all visible at once. We've more or less directly observed some of this, with the black hole in M87, and it's truly a remarkable image. The fact is, we really don't understand what an event horizon is. Let's look at this. The black spot or space in the centre of that image, surrounded by superheated luminous gas, is called the shadow of the black hole. But there's a kind of edge there, and this roughly defines the event horizon. The event horizon is a strange and mysterious thing. It is a sphere beyond which no radiation, and therefore information, can escape. And there is an edge to this distance, called the Schwarzschild radius. This is what we seem to see in the Event Horizon Telescope image. A black space within, an area of highly energised matter beyond, and a boundary between the two. But things are not that simple. Because we are talking about the universe, and energy, and information, and the necessities of quantum physical theory. For one thing, black holes were initially modelled as being non-rotating, with a singularity. In other words, a single dimensionless point of infinite density at the centre, and a single event horizon. Now, however, astrophysicists believe that stellar black holes rotate, since the stars they were formed from are also rotating, and this creates a number of complications. For one, there are two event horizons, an outer horizon and an inner horizon called the Cauchy horizon. Cauchy was a late 18th century to early 19th century mathematician. The outer horizon is just the Schwarzschild radius. The inner, or Cauchy horizon, according to theory, is a place where cause and effect relations break down, and cause no longer precedes effect. Time travel within the Cauchy horizon could be possible. Also, a rotating black hole would not have a singularity at its centre, but rather an infinitely flat disk of matter and energy. 
it could also create a firewall, because the rotation would separate quantum entangled particles and release unimaginable amounts of energy. The rotation would also create an ergosphere, a whirlpool effect that would drag matter and energy in the direction of rotation. A recent enhanced photo of the black hole in M87 actually shows its magnetic field swirling around as the black hole rotates. This is called frame dragging. We can't avoid the information paradox either, which really makes a greater mess of this already fairly messy situation. According to modern physics, information cannot be destroyed, since subatomic particles are actually a multitude of wave functions spread across the universe. What happens to the information in matter and energy when it falls into a black hole? It can't disappear permanently. One idea is that it is preserved on the surface of the outer event horizon as if it were a kind of membrane. This idea may break down however, if rotating black holes cause the outer event horizon to smear into a rather fuzzy region. Another possibility is that for a very old black hole, if they are actually evaporating through Hawking radiation, the seemingly lost information is released from the black hole back into the universe. We don't know, but this information paradox is a major stumbling block. We've seen our first black hole, or at least its shadow, thanks to the Event Horizon Telescope, but we still have only theoretical speculation about what may be going on inside that outer event horizon. It may well be that we won't be able to understand what's in there, because modern physics breaks down inside the event horizon. If there are in fact two event horizons, we have an even longer way to go to understand these things. In fact, at the moment, it's very difficult to see how or if we'll ever penetrate even the outer event horizon. We have no real idea of what may be going on within its outer barrier. That's why it's called the event horizon. We can't see through it. Thanks for watching the video. See you next time.